Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I thought I would share some more of the sewing that I've been doing recently. So it is the jumper sweater that I'm wearing at the moment. It is called I Am Lion. I think the pattern company is called I Am as well. Um, I think they're a French company. Um, so I hadn't used any of their patterns before, but I'd seen something that um, the lady whose name that I can't remember or don't know from the Ford line um, posted about making one of their um, jumpers. I think it might have been this one or it might have been I Am Zebra because they're quite similar. Um, and the instructions seemed very short. So I took that as a good sign, although it could mean that they had just missed out half of the instructions. So it was a bit of a gamble, but I bought it online. I actually think I bought it from the Fold line. I can't actually remember now. Um, but I bought the pattern and I got it as a digital, digital download. So I actually got I Am Lion and I Am Zebra, or Zebra, Zebra, because it's French, um, in a combination as digital download. So it was something like in £11 for one or thirteen fifty for two or something, or maybe it was like €11, because I can't actually remember where I bought it from, I don't know. Anyway, so it was, it was definitely... Um, a, a good like a more cost effective to buy the two together as one digital download and um, so I got two they're quite similar jumpers and um, this one has the feature of having the kind of poofy um, shoulders if you can see that my Pikachu is kind of in the way of it um, poofy kind of shoulders they've also got um, it's got three kind of like press stud fastenings here um, and then it has quite big cuffs, so the cuff is like this big, it's a bit hard to see on camera, sorry. Um, and then it also has like a, a wide-ish um, wide hem um, waistband thing. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so the fabric that I'm using is a looped back sweatshirting fabric and I got this from Minerva Crafts. Um, it is really soft, it's really warm, it feels really nice, like I got it um, and I thought it, it was thinner than I thought it was going to be but it's actually really warm and really soft so I'm really pleased with it. Um, it does have like lots of little people on it who look like they're watching like a football match or something or they are all wearing different colours so I don't really know but then there's like one person saying hi to the person next to him so I think the pattern was called hi. <laughs> Um, so I just thought it was really cute and I really like it. I really like the fabric. So I'm really happy with that. It was really easy to sew as well. Um, it was a little bit more expensive. I can't quite remember now off the top of my head so I'll have to put it in somewhere on the screen. Because um, it ended up costing me a little bit more. I got, I think I got two meters of it because that the pattern said that I would need because the pattern came with French instructions and then English instructions and all the English language instructions were all in imperial measurements. <clears throat> I would have much preferred the metric measurements, but I think the English language ones were to cater for the British and the Americans and so it had to be imperial. So I think all the measurements were really stupid. Um, I, I can't remember what it was, but it was like close to two metres or something. I had, I had to. Uh, buy it slightly more than I actually needed and I, but I just got loads left over because it did that thing on the pattern where it tells you how much fabric you need but it doesn't break it down per size obviously if, you, if you're making a bigger size you'll need more fabric if you're making a smaller size you'll need less but it just said this is how much you'll need so I assume it was given the, the maximum fabric that you would use and I got made one of the slightly smaller sizes so I used less so I have loads left over but like not really enough to make another jumper or another anything really so this is what I'm accumulating it's just lots of like meter pieces of fabric or three quarters of a meter of fabric or some like odd shape of fabric and it's kind of annoying anyway I've moaned about this before and will probably continue to do so for the rest of my life I'm sorry um so on with the sizing that was like my big problem with this pattern so I didn't know what size to go for so I ended up going for a size 40 because the sizes were all European so I went for a size 40 which is kind of the equivalent of a UK size 12. I would normally go for a size 10 but when I looked at the actual measurements that it gave all of my actual body measurements put me in a much bigger size so for a size 38 which would be a UK size 10 it said like you had to have a waist size of 26 inches and 26 inches is pretty small so my waist is like 29 29 and a half something like that which isn't that big but that put me like at 42 or 44 even 
So I went for 40 because normally I'm a 10 and I thought, well, I'll just go up a size and it's a jumper. So if it's a bit big, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, it is too big. So I wish I'd gone for the, the 38, which would be like a UK size 10. Stuck to my guns, but then it really frustrates me because I don't really know, you know, one of the big things about making your old clothes is you should be able to make them to fit better. And when you go into a high street shop and you're just picking a size 10 or a size 12 or whatever, that number is just meaningless because they just make it up as they go along. Um, and every shop has a different size and even within the same shop, within the same range, clothes fit differently within the same size category. So when you're actually making them using your own measurements, you think you would get a more accurate size, but you don't. So again, I've complained about this before as well, but I, I feel like I can't trust the sizes on the patterns and I can't trust the amount of fabric you're telling me to buy, but I don't really have anything else to go on particularly because I'm not that experienced at sewing. So if anyone has any thoughts or tips on this, I know someone in my one of my other videos said you can Google the size. And it's true, I can Google what a size European 40 translates to, and it translates to a size 12. But that doesn't really help me because my actual body measurements that I can measure with a tape measure did not correlate to uh, a size 10 or 12. They were like a size 16 or 44 or whatever it was. So then I didn't know what which one to make. If I had made that, it would have been way too big. So anyway, this is a long rambly way of me saying that I've made it a size too big, basically. But it is a jumper and I can just wear it, so it's not that big of a deal. In terms of the actual pattern, um, so I didn't realise until I was trying to figure out what the seam allowance was and I was poring over these instructions. Like I said, the instruction booklet is not very long. There's not very much given in terms of instructions. It did say seam allowance was included in the pattern, so I thought, great, so I just cut the pattern pieces out. And then I was looking to see what the seam allowance was when I was ready to sew the pieces. And that's when I found that it said, the pattern was designed to be sewn on a serger sewing machine, which I do not have. So it then said, if you're doing it on a regular sewing machine, you need to add an extra 3 sixteenths of an inch onto all the seams, onto like the seam allowance. So first of all, three sixteenths of an inch is a stupid size. I don't have sixteenths of an inch on any of my measuring devices, my tape measure or my ruler, because that's a stupid measurement. <laughs> this is what I meant about the imperial measurements just being stupid. Three sixteenths is stupid. Secondly, I was supposed to clearly add that on before I cut the pieces out. And then thirdly, I still don't know what the seam allowance is supposed to be, or if this is gonna cause me like a major problem. Anyway. Because I was making it a size bigger than I normally would go for, I figured that I probably had some extra fabric to play around with so I didn't worry too much. And because it is just a sweater and it's not super fitted, the actual precise fit isn't as important as a more fitted garment. So I just went with it and I did what I felt was the smallest seam allowance I could do without it just being a really silly, tiny amount. Um, so I probably ended up doing about I want to say less than a centimetre, I don't really know because I didn't measure it, I just kind of lined it up with the edge of my sewing foot on my sewing machine and then sewed and actually it turned out perfectly because um, I didn't really finish any of, the seam, uh, any of the seams off on the inside but because it's like jersey it doesn't fray um, and they're like a perfect length, they're not too big, they don't get in the way, they lie flat, it's, uh, it's worked out really well and like I said this, this fabric was really easy to sew so I was really pleased with that and my zigzagging on my sewing machine seemed to go all right because sometimes zigzag stitch is a little bit troublesome I find. Um, so once I got past that hurdle of just not realising it was aimed at a surge sewing machine, um, I went on to the actual instructions and they are basically pretty straightforward but there isn't a lot of instruction given so I feel like if this is your very first thing you're making you probably struggle. You kind of need to have a little bit of underlying knowledge or experience or just practice having made a few um, few gowns before there are a couple of elements where I didn't understand what they're talking about I mean the very first instruction is to overlock the so where you put the fastening on the like popper things I can't remember what they call them um it tells you to like overlock the um end of the fabric and being that it's designed to be done on a serger that makes a bit more sense. But when I first read that sentence, I was like, well, hang on, what does overlocking mean? Like, I've heard that word before and I kind of understand it, but they've not explained what that is at all. 
So I googled it and then I just did like a zigzaggy stitch along the edge. I found one on my sewing machine um, that uh, did it quite nicely and I was quite pleased. Um, but again it's like it didn't really give you very much explanation of what it was talking about and there were a few other times where i felt like i was relying on the pictures not the words to give to, to explain what i was supposed to do mainly around um the construction of this where the fastening is just because this is the only kind of slightly more complicated or unusual bit and i've never put these like poppery things in before um so i wasn't entirely sure what they meant and on this side because there's there is no fastening you you just trim off the excess fabric which it did say in the initial stages when you're preparing the pattern pieces before you start sewing but i didn't really know what they were talking about so again it's like a, a couple of extra sentences just explaining what they meant would have been really useful but i did figure out eventually but if you're not used to sewing i think that's quite hard um I put these like um, the the fastenings in and that was quite fun because it came in a little kit that I found quite easily actually in, in a local haberdashery and you just like hammer them in with a hammer which I was doing at like 11 o'clock at night so my boyfriend did come down to see what on earth I was doing. Just a heads up it's quite loud when you do that. Um, but yeah they were pretty easy to put in actually no sewing required you just whack them in with a hammer so it's quite fun. Um, and yeah, then I put it all together and then I realized it was too big, but it's fine. It's just oversized, it's loose, it's baggy, it's very warm. It, I love the fabric, the pattern, so it's fine. So I wore it to work the next day, proudly showing off my make. And that's when I was in the middle of talking to someone that I realized that I'd actually put one of the cuffs on the wrong way around. So I'll insert a picture here. So basically, uh, what I did was uh, put one of the pieces on sideways instead of um, instead of not sideways instead of the right way around um, so it also meant that the sleeve was about I'm going to say about, about an inch shorter than the other sleeve but because the sleeves are way too long for me anyway um, I didn't actually notice that because like I said it's too big but also the sleeves are just too long for me and um, which isn't really a problem I just roll them up that's fine but it did mean that I didn't notice that I'd done it wrong. Um, and it's also, again, because when I was cutting out the pattern pieces, I, I, I struggled to know what they meant um, for the cuffs. You have to like fold them in half and then fold them in half again. And I couldn't, I, it took me a second, more than a second, to work out which way you had to fold them. Anyway, clearly on one of them I did it wrong. So it was a very simple fix when I got home, just take it off and sew it back on the right way around. So now it's fine. Although it is still upside down in terms of the pattern on the fabric so all the people go down my arm with their like heads at the top of like my shoulder and then they go down and then on the cuff their heads are like where my fingers are and then they go the op in the opposite direction if that made any sense whatsoever the fact the pad the pattern on the fabric just goes in the opposite direction and this is because of the way that I cut out the pieces I just cut them out facing the same way as all the cut out the pieces I didn't really think about which direction the pattern was going in and again the instructions in the booklet didn't really tell you to do that either. It does mention, it does describe this as being the ribbing. It never at any point in the instruction booklet tells you you need a separate type of fabric for the cuffs and the waistband but it does call it the ribbing and I know that you can use like ribbing ribbed fabric and so in like the hoodies and stuff that I've got that I've bought ready to wear they do have like a, a ribbing on the cuffs and it is like clearly different fabric of the, the same color well I wasn't going to be able to get the same pattern in a ribbed fabric and I wasn't prepared to spend money buying what I would probably have had to buy like a meter of fabric just to make cuffs and a waistband out of so I just used the same fabric and that's that seemed absolutely fine because nowhere in the instructions in the booklet did it tell you you needed a second type of fabric however it might have been easier to work out the patterns had the you know if if my fabric was plain if it didn't have a pattern on it it wouldn't be a problem or if I was using just a plain um, like a light blue or a grey fabric for the cuffs it wouldn't have been a problem either so some of this was me <laughs> some of it some of it I feel like the pattern wasn't necessarily clear enough but when I actually think back about it the construction of the top is actually relatively simple. 
Um, there's not a lot going on. There's not a lot of bells and whistles. And I am really pleased with the finished product. So I have got some kind of plain brown fabric, um, which I'm going to use to try and make the I am zebra, zebra, zebra uh, pattern, which is very similar, like I said, but I don't think it has the... Oh no, I think it might... I don't know. I, it's very similar from what I remember, but I can't really remember. <laughs> should probably look at it before I make it. Um, so I'm going to try that. I think having had the experience of making this, the next version will come out better, which is good. Um, so looking forward to that. Stay tuned. That should hopefully be the next sewing project that I post. Um, because we are now moving into autumn, winter, and it is getting a bit chilly outside, so I need some more jumpers. Anyway, uh, this was my long rambly talk about my jumper. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please leave a comment and give me a like. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please do subscribe.